it's the time to open the service with prayer this evening. Uh, Brother Shelton's went through the list of people that we need to pray for already. Uh, uh, we got a lot of people who need prayer, but God's able to touch every one of them. Uh, are there any other spoken requests before we get started? Hmm. Also, let's keep praying for uh, pray for Audrey. Yeah. I miss her and love her, and she wants to be here. Yeah. Let's pray for her. She has asthma problems and issues. Any other? Let's stand and go to the Lord in prayer. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. We can come together and say the blessed name of Jesus. It's good to be here in God's house again this evening with God's people, the people that are seeking that new country, uh, that heavenly country. You know, uh, a lot of what the trouble that we're going through right now is because people are trying to change the country that we're in. But if they were seeking that heavenly country, things would work out on their own. You know, uh, we live in the best country on earth, but uh, people want to change it. You know, look at what they did in Seattle. A few people tried to take over a city, and it ma made it worse than what it was. But we've got a city that's going to be coming down from God out of heaven. The, where we're going to live at for a thousand years, one man's going to rule. And it's going, it's going to be right. And uh, We've got something to worship him for here tonight. Let's worship him in spirit and truth. Yes. And this time we're going to receive our offering for us as he come. Brother Zach, if you will, ask the Lord bless the time of giving.
faithfulness and giving to this time. We're going to ask Sister Shelton, Sister Harris, Sister Brady come minister in song. It's God that deserves the glory. Anybody that thinks there are anything is deceiving their self. Jesus is the one who did everything for us. 
At, at this time, we're going to hand the service over to Pastor Brother Shelton. Come on, let's give God a hand of praise tonight. Now, I know, I know that during this time, this is a time that's unusual, a time that's different. And there are some things that we are inhibited in right now. Is that right? But we cannot allow this to inhibit our praise and worship unto God. I don't care if they lock us in our homes. We still have to be free in our worship of God. Because no matter what, God is still good. Can you say amen? Come on, give him a hand of praise tonight. <laughs> Woo! Hallelujah. He is great and greatly to be praised. We're glad to have you with us tonight. God bless you for coming. It's good to have Brother Belcher again. I love him and appreciate him. He's a longtime friend of mine. We used to worship together in the old building over there. I told him before service, we used to both have hair and, and, our, and our midsections were smaller. And uh, we've just expanded our borders. Amen. God's helping us. We, I love him and appreciate him. He drove a long way to be here tonight. Each one of you, thank you for coming. It's good to be a child of the King. It's good to be born again. Amen. Good to be sanctified and full of the Holy Ghost and on fire for the Lord. And believe in the Lord's coming soon. Amen. If you have your Bibles, Job chapter 1 tonight. Job chapter 1. Praise God. on Wednesday night, you can correct me if I'm wrong here, they went to the hospital on Wednesday night, she was having some problems and some pains, and uh, I understand they've been quarantined now for two weeks, is that right? Am I wrong about that? So that's what I understand, so pray for them, and uh, <clears throat> maybe better not to go to the hospital right now. Amen? Amen. Let's pray, let's pray that God... I don't want to get back to normal. I want to get back to better than what we were before. Is that right? And uh, what a, I thought, you know, what a wonderful time. We've got, we've got a, lot of our, a lot of our church folks that are watching online right now. Wave at them. And they're faithful. And they're on their every service. And they want to be here. Matter of fact, I thought this afternoon <clears throat> when I was getting ready, it's a shame that people who can't be here want to be here. And those that can be in church don't want to be in church. But we're so glad for all of our home folks that are watching. I know they miss being here. They've expressed that over and over. And uh, we miss them being here. But we're just praying this thing. Is God's going to bring us to a place where we can get everybody back out here. All the home folks and, and have new folks as well. And just believe God's going to do greater things. Amen. Amen. Praise God. So let's keep praying for them. And uh, we miss, don't you miss them? I mean, you know, I've said it before, when one person is not here that's part of the family of God, this local body, uh, you know, you're missed. And things are not right. And uh, so we want to we wanna pray that God will help everybody get back here soon. And uh, we'll be back together. It's going to be a wonderful time. Is that right? Job chapter 1, verse 13 in reading tonight. <clears throat> the Bible says, there was a day when his sons and his daughters were eating and drinking wine in their eldest brother's house. And there came a messenger unto Job and said, The oxen were plowing, and the donkeys feeding beside them. And the Sabaeans fell upon them and took them away. Yea, they have slain the servants with the edge of the sword, and I only am escaped alone, alone to tell thee. While he was yet speaking, there came also another and said, The fire of God is fallen from heaven, and hath burned up the sheep and the servants, and consumed them. And I only am escaped alone to tell thee. While he was yet speaking, there came also another and said, The Chaldeans made out three bands, and fell upon the camels, and have carried them away, yea, and slain the servants with the edge of the sword. And I only am escaped alone to tell thee. While he was yet speaking, there came also another, and said, Thy sons and thy daughters were eating, drinking wine in their eldest brother's house. And behold, there came a great wind from the wilderness, and smote the four corners of the house. 
And it fell upon the young men, and they are dead. And I only am escaped alone to tell thee. Here Job, out of all the servants that he has, he has four left. And each one comes to him bearing bad news. And each servant that comes seems like the news just gets worse and worse and worse. The Bible said, Then Job arose and rent his mantle. He tore his robe and shaved his head and fell down upon the ground and worshipped him. And said, Naked came I out of my mother's womb, and naked shall I return thither. He said, The Lord gave. And the Lord hath taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Woo! Blessed be the name of the Lord. The Lord's given to me. And the Lord's taken it away. But blessed be the name of the Lord. In all of this, Job sinned not, nor charged God foolishly. He did not accuse God with the wrong that was taking place in his life. I want to bring you back to verse 13. The very first part of that scripture, we're going to pull a thought tonight. The Bible said, and there was a day. And there was a day. Father, we ask you right now in that name above every name. The name of Jesus, God, to touch us for the next little while. I need your help here, Lord. I need the anointing of the Holy Ghost that makes preaching so easy. I pray, God, that you'll anoint the ears to hear and the hearts to receive this message with gladness tonight, God. I pray that it touch those sitting on this pews tonight, these precious people, this wonderful congregation. Touch those watching online tonight, God. And I pray, Lord, that you'll just bless and meet needs and minister to both alike. We thank you for the power of the Word of God. We thank you, Lord, that the Word heals, that the Word corrects, that the Word encourages, that the Word guides, the Word shines a light upon our paths, Lord. We pray, dear Lord, that we'll continue to walk in the paths of righteousness. We'll serve you come hell or high water, that we'll live our lives for you and be faithful to you all the days we have on this earth. Father, we thank you for the privilege to be here the privilege to preach the gospel, the privilege uh, to be able to lift up holy hands without wrath and without doubt uh, and worship this great and mighty God that we serve. Uh, we ask that everything that's done be done for your glory and your praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Uh, everybody said amen. Just lift your hands up, give him praise, and love him tonight. Amen. Come on, you're not out of order here tonight. You're in your father's house. You're in order here. Hallelujah. Woo! My God, my God. Amen. We're, we're in order when we worship God and we lift Him up and magnify Him. Amen. I want to preach to you tonight on this thought as God has laid upon our heart. We found here in verse 13 where the Bible said, And there was a day. And there was a day. Job Chapter 1, verse 13 begins with these words, And there was a day. These words are the beginning of many tragic events that's going to occur in a rapid succession for Job and his family. The Bible says suddenly that his children are going to be killed. His flocks are going to be stolen. And the majority of his servants are going to be killed. And each of these events drove a dagger of despair and a dagger of grief deeper into Job's heart. Matter of fact, later on we read in Job chapter 9 how that Job describes these tragedies by saying in Job 9 and 18, he said, He will not suffer me to take my breath, but filleth me with bitterness. In other words, what Job is saying here is that he will not even let me catch my breath with all the things that are going wrong in my life. In Job chapter 1, we find that Job has suffered a great loss. Then we go on over to Job chapter 2, and now we find that Job's body is now being afflicted. Job's body has been covered, the Bible tells us, with boils 
from the top of his head to the soles of his feet. Then to add to Job's misery, we have the appearance of his wife in this story. In Job 2 and 9, here she comes before Job. Now here he is. He's lost everything. He, he's covered. He's sick in his body. And there he's, he's laying in ashes, sitting in ashes and, and scraping his body, the boils and the sores uh, on his body with broken potsherd. And his wife comes to him and begins to offer her opinion. The Bible said in Job 2 and 9, uh, Then said his wife unto him, Dost thou still retain thine integrity? She said, Curse God and die. Here she sees the suffering of this man of God, her husband, uh, and she tells him what you ought to do uh, is just curse God and then go ahead and kill yourself uh, and just be done with it all. I want you to notice Job's reply here to his wife is the perfect model of faith under trial. He said in verse 10, but he said unto her, Thou speakest as one of the foolish women speaketh. Now, he didn't call her a foolish woman here, but he did say that she speaks like a foolish woman. Far from cursing God, he went on to say in verse 10, What? Shall we receive good at the hand of God, and shall we not receive evil? I'm telling you, even under this new assault, Job still refuses to attack God or to attack the motives of this great God that is served. Can you say amen? Then the Bible tells us now Job's friends show up. In Job chapter 2 verse 11. And you would think that his friends, when they see the pitiful condition uh, that he's in, you think, knowing what this man's gone through and all that he's suffered and where he is now, you would think that they would come and offer support. You would think they would come and say, Brother Job, we just want to come by and have prayer with you and let you know that we're praying for you and lifting you up and asking God to help you. But the Bible said instead of giving him comfort, uh, they sat down and began to accuse Job uh, of being a sinner. Uh, and they accused Job of being a hypocrite. Uh, and they tell him that all of his suffering that he's going through uh, is his fault uh, for his uh, failures under God. Their attacks on Job uh, only compound his agony. I believe Job needed somebody to lift him up. I believe Job needed somebody to come by and encourage him. I'm just telling you, friend, every one of us in this journey, uh, there are times that we need somebody to come along and help lift our hands up. We all need somebody to come by and just say, Hey, I don't know exactly what you're going through, uh, but I am praying for you, uh, and I am lifting you up, and I'm believing God uh, is going to help you through it all. Amen. Job needed someone to lift him up, but yet they chose to push, push him down further in his despair. And I thought, dear God, with friends like that, who needs enemies? Amen. Here he is in a single day. The greatest man in his region has been brought to nothing. When the day began, when Job arose that morning, Job started that day and he was rich and he was happy, and he was healthy, and he was blessed. But by the time that day is over, uh, the Bible shows us that Job is now broke. Uh, Job is grieved. Uh, Job is sick, and now Job is cursed. Uh, and so the question has to be raised. Uh, how is Brother Job going to respond uh, to his setbacks? Uh, how is Brother Job going to respond uh, with what he's facing right now? He's lost his children. He's lost his wealth. He's lost his health, his cattle, and his many servants. His wife has told him, why don't you curse God and die? And his friends have sat down and are calling him a sinner and calling him a hypocrite. So how is Job going to respond? What's going to happen next? Well, I can tell you uh, that how he responds is going to expose uh, the condition of his heart. It's been said that the battle does not make us what we are, but the battle shows what we already were. 
as Satan believes that the suffering uh, that's been forced upon Brother Job is going to cause Brother Job to curse God. He believes that the suffering imposed upon him uh, is going to cause him to turn uh, his back on the Lord of glory. The Bible said in Job 1 and 11, but put forth thine hand now. This is Satan talking to God. But put forth thine hand now and touch all that he hath and he will curse thee to thy face. Now God has allowed Satan to do the very worst to this man of God. Amen. Satan has attacked him. Satan has afflicted him. Uh, Satan has forced himself uh, upon this man of God. Uh, and now heaven waits to see uh, what Job is going to do. I'm telling you those four remaining servants uh, they're watching the man of God uh, to see what's going to happen next that very wife that said you ought to curse God and die now she stands and watches uh, to see what her husband's going to do those friends who have called him a sinner uh, and accused him of being a hypocrite uh, now they're going to watch uh, and wait to see what Job uh, and how he is going to respond you listen to me tonight everything's going good for brother Job Job has been blessed beyond measure the Bible said that he was upright he feared God he eschewed evil and that there was none like him in the land God's hand's been upon him. He's walking in the favor of God. He knows the blessings of the Lord. But the Bible said, and then there was a day. Everything is going to change on that day. Everything's going to go a different direction on this particular day. The protective hedge that God built around Job has been breached. All the stories have ended now. Brought to him by the servants. His wife has said, why don't you give up? Why don't you curse God and die? His friends are saying that you need to repent. That you meet need to make things right with God Almighty. And Job has been left destitute. Job has been left bereaved and broken. Job has gone from the highest mountain to the lowest valley all in one day. And things are getting worse and worse and worse by the minute. So the question's raised. How is Job going to respond? What is this man of God going to do in this low condition? Listen to me. Anybody can worship God when things are going good. Anybody can give him praise. Now I want to say this to you. You know, in this church age, even when things are going good, it's hard to get people to give him praise and worship but Job knew what it was to be a worshiper of the Lord Job knew what it was to give God praise but listen to me now Job's going into a valley now there's going to be a day when the bottom's going to be dropped out the props are going to be removed and Job's going to be thrust into a dark place in his life the devil's saying that you ought to curse God why don't you turn your back on him. Why don't you just surrender? So what's Job going to do now? When everything's good, he's a worshiper. But when everything turns bad, how will Job respond? Somebody say amen. I'm preaching to a dead bunch tonight. Now how's Job going to respond? Now what's brother Job going to do? I'm telling you, anybody can go along when everything's going along all right. I said anybody can go along when everything's going good. But how do we respond? Amen. When the time changes, when everything turns in the opposite direction. The Bible tells us in verse 20, Then Job arose and rent his mantle and shaved his head and fell down upon the ground and worshipped. 
The Bible said Job responds by rising up. Come on, say amen. Amen. All of hell's been unleashed upon this man of God. Rather than laying down and quitting, rather than throwing in the towel, rather than just cursing God and dying, the Bible said the first thing Job does was that he arose, that he stood up, that he got up and rent his mantle and shaved his head and fell down upon the ground and worshiped God. I'm just telling you, friend, that old devil, when he attacks our mind, when he attacks our body, when he attacks our home, when he attacks our churches, his intentions are to cause us to lay down and roll over and to give up and to quit. But let me tell you something, friend. I still believe that when he comes uh, that the church uh, must arise uh, that she must stand up uh, in the power of God uh, and march on uh, and worship him in spirit and in truth uh, somebody give him praise tonight Woo! my God my God my God oh my 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 the Bible said then Job arose. You would think just the opposite. His wife tell him to give up. His friends are saying it's over. It's your fault. The devil saying, what's the use? Look at what serving God's got you. Look at what living's rights got you. Why don't you just deny God? Why don't you turn your back on God? But Job responds by arising, by getting up. I don't know, maybe maybe he's been nailed to that seat by the devastating news, blow after blow after blow as he hears from those servants. Now all the reports are in. What will Job do? I can see old brother Job sitting there in his chair. One servant comes, tells him the bad news. The next servant comes, tells him the bad news. The next servant comes, tells him the bad news. The fourth servant comes and tells him the worst news of all. All ten of your children, they're dead, they're gone. I can imagine every blow just brings Job farther and deeper into that seat. But when the last messenger come. I'm telling you Job didn't lay down and die. Job didn't get up, give up but the Bible said that Job arose. Job got up. He tore his garments. Amen. And he fell on his face and he began to worship the Lord of glory. I'm just telling you tonight my friend it doesn't matter what hell brings against us. We can still stand up in the power of God Almighty and worship him right on. Chance and give him glory tonight. Mama, mama. Woo! Job summons all of his strength. And the Bible said then Job arose. And Job rips the outer garment in two. That garment was a symbol of his, of his station in life. That robe would have been very costly. And it spoke of his wealth and his power. That torn robe symbolizes the brokenness of Job's heart. That torn robe tells us that all that this man has been through in this day, that Job no longer sees himself as a man of wealth and power and of status. He's a broken man, both inwardly and outwardly. The Bible said then Job shaves his head. This is a symbol of mourning. He's shattered and he's empty and he's hurting. And by shaving his head, it symbolizes how broken this father is, how hurt this man of God is. But the Bible said then Job does something amazing. The Bible said then Job falls to the earth. Now listen, I don't know how you feel about it, but I know the devil 
devil's watching all of this play out. He's watching everything going on with this man of God. Job's wife is watching. His servants are watching. His, his friends are watching. But rest assured, the old devil's standing somewhere watching too. He saw Job get up. He saw Job tear his garment. He saw Job shave his head. And he watched as Job fell to the earth. No doubt that old devil saying, I've got him now. I've got him right where I want him. He's going to lay down and quit. He's going to lay down and give up. He's going to roll over and he's going to denounce God. But the Bible said that when he falls to the earth, it's not because that he's crushed in his heart and his heart is filled with sorrow, but he falls on the earth and he begins to worship God, the God that he knows, the God that he loves, and the God that he serves. The devil expected him to give up, but Job fell down before God and begin to magnify him and worship him and glorify the Lord. Oh God, help us here tonight. In the most painful experience of his life, what does he do? He falls before God and begins to worship the God of glory. What a slap in the face of Satan. I said, what a slap in the face of the devil. The devil said, look at that poor pitiful man. Look at him fall down on the earth. Look at where he's at now. I brought my very worst against him. And look at where he is. He's going to give up. I've got him now. But listen, Job, he didn't lay there and weep. He didn't lay there and murmur against God. But he began to worship. What a slap in the face of that old devil. Let me tell you something, uh, child of God, uh, when life brings its worst, uh, when things get bad, uh, and when they go from worse to worse, uh, the devil's standing by, uh, watching to see how you're going to respond. Uh, why don't you slap him in his face uh, by worshiping uh, the Lord of glory? Uh, why don't you lift your voice uh, and give God praise in the face of your adversary? Satan's waiting for him to give up. He's waiting for some of you to quit. He's waiting for some of those watching online just to surrender and say, that's enough. I can't take anymore. I'm telling you, Job shows us by example how we are to respond when we have those kind of days. How we're to respond when things get dark. How do we're to respond when the bottom falls out underneath us rather than just sitting down and quitting, rather than just murmuring and whining. We ought to praise the Lord of glory. The Bible said in everything, give thanks and let the fruit of your lips uh, be praise unto God uh, continually uh, whether it's good or bad uh, go on and give him praise lift your hands and give him glory tonight y'all come on church lift him up tonight Some of you have been in that place. Some of you in that low place right now. And the devil's just watching and waiting to see what you're going to do next. He's waiting for you to give up. 
He's waiting to hear you sing his song of murmuring and complaining and questioning God. Why am I going through this? Why am I in this place? I've been serving God. I've been living right. Well, why don't we right here in this house tonight, right there in that home tonight, why don't we do like Brother Job? Why don't we just worship the King of Kings and the Lord of all lords? Why don't we just slap that devil? right in the face by giving God praise in the midst of it all. I feel God wanting to do something mighty here tonight. I'm waiting for you to worship me, saith the Lord. I see your condition. I know where you are. I know the weight that's on you. I know the pressure you're under. But yet still I wait for you to lift up my name. I'm still your God. I'm faithful to you. I will not fail you. So worship me. Lift up your voice to me. Lift up your hands and your heart and worship me, saith the Lord. Put your hands in honor of the Holy Ghost tonight. Hallelujah to God. Just glorify him. Come on, child of God. You may feel low right now. You may be weighed down with problems. You may feel overloaded in your soul. But let me tell you something. Don't you give the devil glory by exalting him with your murmuring and complaining. But why don't you lift up the God of glory? Why don't you magnify him? Why don't you worship him? We all go through those days. But God is still God. Hallelujah to God. Hallelujah to God. Hallelujah to God. Come on, church. I don't care if you can't lift your head up out of the dirt. You give God praise. I said you give God praise. I don't care if you're weighed down. I don't care if the load's heavy. You just go ahead and give God praise. Let the adversary know I'm going to worship him. No matter what, no matter what comes, I'm going to give my God praise through it all. Oh, God. What you going to do now, Brother Job? What you going to do now? The day's changed. You woke up, everything was going good. 
But now everything's gone bad. One servant after another. What are you going to do now, Brother Job? Why don't you just give up? Why don't you just quit going to church? Why don't you just quit reading your Bible? Why don't you quit praying? What are you going to do now, Brother Job? The Bible said Job got up and he got down with his faith to God and he began to worship him and magnify him and glorify the Lord of glory. What are you going to do now, child of God? What are you going to do in that condition you're in? You got sickness in your body. You got problems in your family. The devil's tearing at your mind. What are you going to do? Are you going to quit? Are you going to give up? Are you going to surrender? Or are you going to give God worship and praise and declare the Lord gives and the Lord takes away? But blessed be the name of the Lord. Stand all over this house and raise your hands to him. I feel God here tonight. Hallelujah. Are you going to quit? Are you going to lay out of church? Are you going to turn your back on God? Are you going to whine and murmur and complain? I'm not being ugly. I'm just telling you that's what the devil's waiting on you to do. He's wanting us to have a pity party. He's wanting us to sit out and feel sorry for ourselves. But let me tell you something, child of God. God's still on the throne. He's still alive and well. He's still got everything under control. And everything over your head is still under the feet of of God above. Hallelujah. Come on, give him praise tonight. Hallelujah. 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 I feel like heaven wants to come down and kiss the earth where we stand right here tonight. Some of us been living in fear. We don't know what's going to happen next. Some, listen, this thing got people pulled down. It's got people discouraged. There's sickness all around us, it seemed like. And people, listen, their countenance are hanging low. Their hands are hanging low. Their heads are hanging down. And the old enemy is just sitting back and saying, why don't you give up? What's the use? What's the point in it all? I want to tell you something, friend. I don't want to give the devil an ounce of glory. I said, I don't I want to give him an ounce of glory. I want to magnify the God that gave me life and the God that keeps me and the God that will see me through. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah to God. Let's thank Him tonight. Let's love Him. Let's thank Him tonight. Come on, church. Come on, let's talk to Him out loud tonight. Thank you for the good days and thank you for the bad days. 
Thank you when things are going good. Thank you when things are going bad. Thank you when I'm on the mountain. And thank you when I'm in the valley. Thank you when I'm healthy. Thank you when I'm sick. Thank you when I got the raise. Thank you when I got laid off. Thank you when everything's good at home. Thank you when everything's falling apart. In everything, give thanks. I said in everything, give God thanks. Hallelujah to God. So what you going to do now? Things have not gone the way you thought that they should. Your family's getting worse rather than getting better. That son or daughter, that grandson or grandchild uh, that you've been praying for God to save for years, uh, they're not any closer. They're getting worse. Uh, what you going to do now? Uh, you got sickness in your body. Uh, what are you going to do now? Uh, your nerves are frayed and on edge. Uh, what are you going to do now? Uh, well, I believe we ought to take a lesson uh, from the faith of Job. Uh, when everything turns bad, uh, when everything looks down, uh, we ought to look up. Uh, I said we ought to look up and give God the praise to it all. Glory, 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 glory. Hallelujah to God. Hallelujah to God. Oh, God, what a slap to the face of the devil. I said, what a slap to the face of the devil. The devil thought Job was going to quit. He really believed he was going to curse God. He really believed he was going to denounce God. But Job did just the opposite. Job fell on his face before God. And he said, naked I came into this world, and naked I'm going to leave this world. The Lord gives, and the Lord takes away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And in all of this, Job did not sin, and he did not charge God foolishly. I'm telling you, what a mighty faith. What a wonderful faith to see as this day arrives. Job woke up and everything was great, Brother Zach. But before the day's over, he's going to lose everything. And he will respond by faith. He started the day worshiping the Lord. And he's going to finish the day worshiping the Lord. Oh, come on, child of God. We started this race uh, worshiping God. I said we started this journey uh, worshiping God. Uh, we've been through some valleys. Uh, we've been through some bumps and bruises. Uh, we've been through some hard places. Uh, but Sister Tina, we're going to finish this thing uh, worshiping God. Uh, I said we began in worship. Uh, and we're going to end it uh, by worshiping the God that gave us life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to God. I want y'all to come and sing that song through it all. Let's worship him tonight. I don't know where you are. I don't know what you're going through. I don't know what you're facing. Listen, we may wake up tomorrow morning and everything be fine. And before the day's over, amen, everything's turned upside down. But I'm telling you, if you start your day worshiping, you can end your day worshiping this great God, knowing that all things are working together for good that love Him and are called according to His purpose. I'm just telling you, through it all, keep Keep on worshiping God. Woo! And there was a day. And when the day is over, we find Job starting the day in worship. 
and ending his day in worship. He started that day with everything. And when the day's over, he's lost it all. But he didn't lose his worship unto God. Lift your hands and love him while they sing tonight.
toes and have faith. Anybody can say, I have faith. Anybody can say, oh, yes, sir, I'm going to serve God no matter what. It's easy to say that when you're on that mountaintop. I'm telling you, when the lights are shut off in your life, the night sees and sets in. Most people don't respond that way. People, they do the first thing they do is stop worshiping God. I said they stop worshiping God. They feel sorry for themselves. They have pity parties. And they say, why me, oh God? Why am I going through this? Why am I having to deal? Why am I having to face this? But Brother Job got on his face and worshiped God through the most difficult experiences of his life. Hold on one second. I'll never forget a story I heard. We were at a, a prayer conference, I believe it was, a few years ago. There was a lady there, Sister Brewer, I believe was her name. I believe it was Brother and Sister Brewer. They used to be the administrative bishop in eastern North Carolina. Or Brother Tim Dean, one of my dear friends on this earth, pastors. And he had told me what a wonderful couple they were. They were just a nice, nice couple. At that prayer conference, she got up and she was telling about how she had been diagnosed with cancer. And she said she had to go through some, some severe treatments, chemo treatments. And she said they were making her so sick, so sick, so sick. And she said on an occasion, she said, now I was a, I was a worshiper. I believed in worshiping the Lord. She said, I got sick with that cancer. And I went through a, they did some surgeries and all, didn't have surgeries and all kinds of, she went through it. Just let me tell you, they put her body through the ringer. And she said, I was in the bathroom. I'm not trying to make you sick. I'm just telling you what she said. She said, I was in the bathroom over the commode. She said, I was throwing up so violently that I couldn't even get my breath. She said, but I told my husband, you come in here with me. I want you to stand beside me. And while I'm getting sick, I want you to worship God for me. And I want you to praise the Lord for me. She said, while I can, because I'm getting so sick and throwing up so violently, she said, my husband stood beside me while I'm throwing my insides up and he's praising God for me and he's worshiping God for me. She went on to say sometime later God completely healed her of that cancer. I'm just telling you when those times come we don't know what we're going to face. How will you respond when that day comes in your life? You can worship him on the mountain. God help us to worship him in the valley. You can worship him when things are good. God help us to worship him when things seem bad. You say, how can I worship him when things seem bad? Because I trust that he knows what he's doing. And I can trust him that he's in control of everything in my life and the things around my life. God knows exactly what he's doing, Brother Charlie. God don't never make a mistake. Sometimes things don't make sense, but by faith we'll worship him anyhow, knowing that he's got a perfect plan and he knows what he's doing. Woo! And he's in control of it all. Come on, give him a large hand of praise and worship and glory in this house tonight. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. We've all been at that place. We've all had them pity parties. Oh, come on, you bunch of sanctified people. We've all had them places where we felt sorry for ourselves. Because I don't understand why this is happening to me, Lord. I don't know why I'm having to go through this. I love you. I serve you. I live. I live for you. But then when it's all said and done, Mama. Hindsight's always twenty twenty. Then we can see exactly that God knew exactly what he was doing the whole time. God had a plan in all of it. God, Job didn't let his worship be based on what his eyes saw. 
what his ears heard or what he felt in his body. Sure, that man was crushed. I, I dare say, don't any of us know that pain? Ten children in one day, all of them gone. I don't believe the wealth bothered him. I mean, sure, you know. I'm sure he was sad his servants died. But when they said, oh, your kids are dead, oh, God. Oh, God. Some of you know some of that pain. But Job had ten wiped out. Job didn't let his, what he saw with his eyes and what he heard with his ears and what he felt in his heart. He didn't let, didn't let that rob God of worship and praise. He tore his garments as a sign of mourning. He shaved his head to show that I'm broken on the inside now. I'm hurting here. But then he got down his face and he began to worship the Lord. I thought about King David. We're going to go home in just a minute. I thought about King David. When David's son is dying. And David's laying before God. He won't eat anything. He's fasting and he's seeking God and He's thrown dirt upon his head, a sign of mourning and grief. And he's asking God, please heal this boy. And the servants came and said, he's gone. I'm sorry. He's dead. And the Bible said David got up, washed his face, told them servants, prepare me a meal. And the Bible said David went and worshipped God. Now that seemed like a strange time to worship God, don't it? When you just got news that your child's gone. But see, David had this faith. David said, his servants said, don't make no sense. David said, I can't bring him back. He's gone. But by faith, I can go to be where he is. Hallelujah to God. And so David worshiped God by faith. And there was a day. We all going to have those days. I don't know what yours will be and I don't know what mine's going to be. I'm telling you, when those days come, God help us to let our faith shine in the light of that experience and that trial. That we worship God anyhow and slap that old devil right in the face. Slap him right in the face. What you going to do now, Job? The old devil's whispering in his ear, give up. Quit. Renounce God. Curse Him. Turn your back on Him. Deny Him. And Job said, The Lord gives. And the Lord takes away. Blessed. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And that old devil had to walk away with his head down and his tail between his legs. Wounded. Because a man of God worshiped God by faith in the, the most painful experience of his life. Can you give him praise? I want to live by that kind of faith, don't you? I want to live by that kind of faith. People are watching you. Your family is watching you. Your friends are watching you. The world's watching you to see how you respond when things don't go right. When things don't go the way you think they ought to. When things go bad, people are watching you. And that old accuser's watching. Just waiting to go before God and accuse you. There they are. Look what you've done for them. Look at how you've saved them. Look at how you've blessed them. And the first thing, trials comes. They act like they don't know who you are. I'm not going to let the devil go before God and accuse me of something and it be true. God's good all the time, and all the time, God is good. Can you say praise the Lord? Amen. Let's be worshipers of God. Let's lift Him up and magnify Him and love Him and serve Him no matter what. Let's serve God no matter what. Amen. Aren't you glad you came to church tonight? So good to have you. So good the Lord have the presence of the Lord. I told you this morning, no matter what happens, no matter the, whatever happens out there, they can loot and tear down and burn, do all that stuff. COVID can come across, whatever, the whatever. But God's still good. And we're still going to serve Him and live for Him and worship Him. 
all the days we're on this earth. Can you say amen? Don't forget about service Wednesday night. Service will be at 7 o'clock. Come back. Let's be praying. Let's be watching. Be ready. Brother Belcher and I was talking about the coming of the Lord before service. And the Lord can come before this night's over. Everything's been fulfilled. Nothing left to be fulfilled. The only thing left to come to the Lord. The Lord's going to come. Yes, sir. So let's be ready. Don't be getting ready. Be ready. Be watching and be ready. I'm ready for the Lord to come. How about you? Amen. Brother Branson, come. Pray our closing prayer. Please stay in your seats. Brother Charlie and Brother Zach is going to get you and drag you out of here. Lord willing, we'll see you on Wednesday night. God bless you. Don't do that. Amen. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, I thank you for the word tonight, Lord, and I thank pray, dear Heavenly Father, Lord, that you would just keep us safe, Lord, and bring us back at the next point in time, Lord. Help us to worship you, Lord, in spirit and truth. In Jesus Christ's name I pray. Amen. 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 God bless you. There is a blood that cost a life that paid my way, death its price. When it flowed down from the cross, my sins were gone, my sins forgot. There is a grave that tried to hide this precious blood that gave me life. But in three days he breathed again and rose to stand in the
grace. And it tried to hide this precious blood that gave me life.